All right, and we should be live. Gonna do a quick stream. Got like maximum an hour and a half, but I probably want to end before then. <clears throat> so I have to go to work. But, you know, we can't not do a stream on Halloween. That'd be silly when we're building Gix. I mean, have you seen this guy? Where is he? Oh no, go to my profile. Thank thank you. Thank you, little Karibo. Right, where is he? Full screen in. There he is. Look at that thing. <clears throat> if that's not the most Halloween-y thing. I mean, I guess he's more... If I'm being completely honest, he's more of like a early 90s heavy metal cover than necessarily a Halloween thing, but still, <clears throat> wonderfully horrifying. Oops, I've accidentally clicked off the thing. I managed to touch just the top. Yeah, I was looking at the spoilers from over the weekend for the new Magic set <clears throat> coming out. Like, interesting cards. Teferi, I think we touched on him the day that they spoiled him. <clears throat> Looks like he's going to be absolutely insane. Just, you just need to be able to draw eight cards. Uh, the turn that you cast him and everything will explode. And by everything, I mean all of your opponent's stuff will go away. So, that's... That has the potential to be very dumb in some formats. I'm interested to see what he winds up doing. Um, all the commands have been... Meh? Like, uh, I don't, like, they don't need to be insanely powerful. Commands, in constructed formats especially, have been, like, really strong. Um, the original ones, especially Cryptic, but also... Um, like, Profane saw some play, I'm pretty sure, and um, Primal Command shows up both in Constructed and a lot of Commander decks and cubes and whatnot, so. And Austere Command, very cube friend or not cube, very uh, Commander-friendly card. I mean, it is a cube-friendly card, too, but a very Commander-friendly card with all those useful modes. So, and then the Dragon Lord's commands from... Uh, Dragons of Tarkir were all, um, I mean, obviously some of them saw a lot more play than others, but I don't think any of them, let's see, Dromokas was one of the most heavily played, uh, Kologons is still heavily played, um, Ojutais I know saw a bunch of plays, Silumgars is really, has a lot of really good modes on it. Um, again, a cube card and commander card that I see a lot. Um, who's the last one? Why can't it? Maybe, maybe there was one bad one. Um, <clears throat> we had Dromoka and Ojutai. Then for black, we have Silmgar and, um, Kologan. Um, um, hmm. Green, red, green, white, black, red, black, blue, blue, white, blue, black. Why, why am I having so much trouble with this? I have like four commands in front of me <clears throat> from the Dragon Lords, and I am just not conjuring the name or thing. Like, either I've forgotten it and I counted all five of them already. All right, so it's Dromoka, Silumgar, um, Ojutai, Kologon, and Atarka. Okay, I, wow. I know we've established that I can't math, but that was counting to five, and I failed somehow. Okay, good job, me. <clears throat> that, that's impressive. That's, that's spectacularly bad. Um... So yeah, I don't know how I feel about Arcane Proxy. Like, it seems okay. The fact that it doesn't have Flash um, does make me kind of sad. Like, that was <clears throat> a lot of the raw power in not only Snapcaster, but also um, 
the Gear Hulk. And in similar cards, it's just being able to get back um, instant speed interaction. And it is a mythic. I think they could have given it Flash. Maybe it's too good for Constructed at that point. Maybe it's super obnoxious and they have to <coughs> care, but... Um, this thing... I don't know. It seems fun. Like, it reads pretty cool, but at the end of the day, I don't think it's <clears throat> that amazing. Like, you scry everything to the bottom. Uh, whenever you scry things to the bottom, um, you exile them afterwards. <clears throat> and then, uh, during your turn, you can play any card that's been exiled with the anchor. So this doesn't stop. Like, if you scry a card to the bottom, and you exile it that turn and you don't cast it, uh, on your next turn, you can cast that card again. Like, <clears throat> as long as the Temporal Anchor is still in play, like, you don't... As long as it doesn't get blinked or uh, destroyed or anything, because even if it changes zones and comes back, uh, it won't let you cast the things that it exiled originally. But, <clears throat> yeah, as long as it keeps coming back, or as long as it stays in play, rather... Uh, when it gets back to your turn, you can still cast everything that you're exiling with it. So you put all the stuff that you don't want on the bottom. Uh, you can also, because it lets you play them, uh, scry lands to the bottom and use that as your land drop for the turn. So, while drawing fresh cards, so you don't have to miss out on your land drop, so that's pretty cool. It's a six drop, that seems... I don't know, like, what deck is going to want this, but... There, there might be a fun scry deck. Uh, what's really interesting is, actually, now that I think about it, uh, the Sphinx from the first Commander Legends that lets you draw all the cards you would scry. Um, <clears throat> I wonder if that works. I said it, but now that I'm thinking about it, I wonder if it replaces... Because if it replaces the scry with the draw, then it doesn't work. But if you get to draw those cards and it still counts as a scry, like you're like you're scrying, like the actual function of scrying becomes drawing the cards, but you still technically scryed cards. This doesn't say, um, oh yeah, it does say you have to choose to put cards on the bottom in order to get that. So yeah, if you leave them on top, you don't get the cards from the bottom. If you draw that way. Okay, never mind. This isn't working with the Sphinx the way I thought it was going to. Like, now, now that I'm actually thinking about it a lot better. Not really harder, just better. <clears throat> Faster, stronger. Um, great, now I'm going to get copyright claimed. Uh, anyway. And you may be laughing at that, but... One time I got one of my videos held for like a day because... <clears throat> They decided I sounded too much like an acapella barbershop quartet. And it's just like, what? <laughs> how? In what universe? And why? how did I fall into that universe? Uh, so yeah, that won't work with the Sphinx, because you're replaced... Even if you're not uh, chain, Even if the, it still counts as a scry, despite the fact that you're putting the cards into your hand instead of on the top or bottom... Um, you never put cards on the bottom because of that, so the Temporal Anchor can't trigger from that and exile cards. Because it'd be funny if the cards wound up in your hand instead of being on the bottom, and then you got to exile the bottom X cards of your deck also and have access to casting them at the same time. Like, that would be pretty neat. Um, what else did we get... Like, we got a handful of interesting cards, yeah. Gix's Command is the one I didn't see until today. Like, I saw the first three. I'm assuming that the last command is, um, Titania's slash Gaia's Command. So we'll have to wait and see what that does, because that's not on the list. Um... I am, like, the crown is kind of interesting. The crown, uh, is a bad, um... Freaking, what's its name? Um, skull Clamp. Wow. Uh, Crown is a bad Skull Clamp, but, you know, Skull Clamp is disgustingly broken. So, you know, the bad version of that is still a card that I'm interested in. Because um, if, if the 
normal version is insanely powerful and broken, then the bad version of it is either still really strong or actually actively bad. And I think this is just really strong. Uh, you pay one black to equip it. The downside is that because it has the black to equip, it can't go in all of the decks that Skull Clamp goes in. But if you could spend an extra black to equip your guy and then Skull Clamp it up and draw three cards, I think that's okay a lot of the time. Also, just having it on your dude, giving it plus two power, and then it dies and you draw a card. Like, all of that seems fine. Like, I'm definitely running this uh, when I open it in Limited until it gets proven to me that this is a bad card and a waste of my time somehow. And I don't think that's happening. I mean, we don't have the full set. Maybe it is, but... I have to believe that thing's going to be good. I do see all the cards that make uh, Power Stones, and... I'm not seeing a lot of good abilities to spend the Power Stone mana on, so all of the good Power Stone cards are going to be like, you know, these giant, insanely high casting cost artifact creatures, like to get them in their full mode instead of their prototype mode. Feels like... Yeah, yeah. So it's still not at 100%, and I might be a bit too animated when I'm talking, so maybe I need to dial it down a bit. I'm going to get a little more subdued, despite the fact that I'm talking about new magic cards. Also, Obstinate Bailoff is an uncommon. It's like, I remember when this guy was a rare and, like, super playable. Mostly because opponents were making you discard lots of cards at the time. So, you know, you get a free 4-4 four, four and some life. <clears throat> Joke's on them. This thing is just nuts, like, two mana, three power flyer. I think that's Urza's son, if I'm remembering the lore correctly. I could be wrong about that. Might be somebody else, but I'm pretty sure that's his and Miss Ben Krug's uh, son. Uh, Sahili's fine. I don't know that she's gonna do anything in constructed formats. Um... Like, if I had a good Blue-Red Artifacts Matters deck, I might be considering, you know, like for Commander, I might be considering her. Um, like, being able to plus to scry one and draw a card is good. Being able, like, she might do something in, like, Standard just because she makes two one ones to protect her. And her ultimate's, like, relatively easy to get to. Um, if she survives one turn cycle with her plus one... You just get that, if you really want it that bad, so. Uh, Taunos is a weird build around. I could see doing a commander deck for him, but I think if I do another one so far, Tokasia, 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 um, this thing down here, uh, two, two green, two white, two blue, uh, exile her from your graveyard, return any number of target artifact cards with total mana value 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield at sorcery speed. Uh, and creatures you control, while she's in play, creatures you control have vigilance and tap surveil one. So, very easy to get a lot of cards into your graveyard and then just bring them back. Um, also this thing. Uh, three mana, flash flying, colorless spells, and artifact spells. Uh, can be cast as though they had flash. And whenever you cast a spell, if you spent more mana on it than this thing's power, it gets a 1-1 one, one counter. This is one of the most interesting colorless commanders I've seen since, um, uh, Great Distortion Kozlek. Stasis Coffin is okay. The Portal to Phyrexia at 9 mana. 9 mana, um, <clears throat> but very, very potent if you ever cast it. <clears throat> yeah, each opponent sacks 3 creatures, and then you get 
a debtor's knell effect from it, <clears throat> where you get to bring back a creature every turn. Uh, the Suchi Cave Guard, definitely an infinite mana engine with recursion effects and ways to sacrifice this thing, like Ashnod's Altar and uh, Croc Clan Ironworks. <clears throat> like the original Suchi already had some stuff going on for it in that regard, so th this like eight mana thing that gives you eight mana <clears throat> when it dies. Just way easier to pull that off. Land that makes power stones. And land that surveils. <clears throat> this thing at common. Um, definitely in sealed, probably. <clears throat> in standard, this thing is going to be <clears throat> a, a card. Um, I'm sorry, not in standard. Um, in draft. Like, sealed, definitely. Draft, Probably, you're going to want one of these, I feel like. Um, if games don't go really fast, the amount of card selection you can get out of this card is going to be very powerful. Like, sealed 100%, you should be running at least one copy of this card if you open it. Um, draft, I have a feeling that you're going to want a copy of this card. <clears throat> like, the opportunity cost of it being colorless uh, so that you have a colorless land in your deck is <clears throat> not, you know, nothing, but I definitely feel like you are going to want this more often than you don't, like, one copy at least. So, uh, very similar to the, um, the Scry campuses from Strixhaven. <clears throat> Alright, so those were all, those were some of the cards I was looking at, and I've already eaten up, like, up to half of my time that I had, so, uh, let's go ahead and do, let's start with, so, Ikoria Commander actually comes alphabetically before, don't you sass me, Gatherer, don't you sass me like that, Gatherer, don't, don't you do it. All right, gather. I'm. I've had just about enough of you right now. So what? What are we? What are we mad about? What? What if I take that away? Go back to expansion. Go back to. Oops, not you. I. So Icoria Commander. Add, and search. Uh huh. That's what I thought. <clears throat> Alright, so you're looking for unique cards from Ikoria Commander. Yeah, I don't think we need Bonder's Ornament. Other creatures in my graveyard and scavenge? No. Like, yeah, we're going to put a bunch of cards into my graveyard, but I don't think we need that. Alright, creature. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think Gix necessarily needs to be indestructible, or needs to be indestructible specifically. <clears throat> um, we care at all about Cryptic Trilobite. So it's double X and enters with X counters, and you can one tap to put a counter on it. <clears throat> uh, and you can remove counters from it to add that. Um... Oh, is do you get two colorless per counter? Uh, maybe, kind of. <clears throat> I don't know. It still seems <clears throat> a bit too vulnerable as a thing to dump a ton of mana into that then makes mana. Because I definitely want a ton of mana in this deck. This deck is going to be able to spend all of its mana all of the time. So... Don't know if we need Deadly Rollick or not. 
Probably not, but maybe. Uh, each opponent chooses a creature card in their graveyard. Put those cards on the battlefield under my control. Nah, they're going to have tons of dead creatures if we're doing our thing, so. Killing Blade. Crystal Desert. Good old Man Escape Refractor. Um, I mean, I'm planning on running the land, so maybe this is the deck that gets it. <clears throat> Oops, that's OBS. Hey, right, so down to Commander. Commander Legends. Commander and Brawl. Scroll down here. There's Carrot, Grim Hireling. So it's before Grim Hireling. I believe it's before the Vein Witch... Oh no, it would be after that, because I definitely got to play Strixhaven in paper, and then, you know, like everybody else. No Ikoria for me in paper. I literally did, like, one draft, and because my computer was terrible at the time, I didn't get to do any Arena Ikoria even. So I never got to know the joy of opening a companion while they still didn't cost mana to put into your hand and then cast later on. Uh, top curve. Cards. You may play them. Yeah, I don't think we're going to wind up mutate. Like, we can mutate because Gix is non-human, so we would have tons of things to mutate onto him if we wanted, like, any and all of the mono-black mutate creatures, but I don't think that's necessary. And so then you lose three life for each soul counter on it. I don't think we need that. Uh, just keep going. Whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had one or more counters on it, you draw a card and you lose a life. Yeah, not where I'm going to be at with this deck. <clears throat> Parasitic Impetus. Lots of lands. Sanctuary Blade. Yeah, still don't think I need that one either. Old Skull Clamp. Oh, there's two pages for this one. Uh, choose a creature type, creature of the chosen type dies, you may draw a card. Yeah, this thing, I feel like you only want to run it in your decks where you are all in on a creature type. Like, you know, if the deck were, like, strictly zombies and you could play this and whenever a zombie died you would draw a card, like, I don't think you ever run this and, unless you know you're playing against somebody who brings tribal, like, all the time. Like, if you have, like, two or three players in your group that, um... Ha each have like a tribal deck that they love to break out at least once per night uh, then you can consider something like this if you are not tribal but I feel like you have to be tribal for this thing to actually be good Aaron deals 4 damage to that player Getting to sacrifice one of our creatures for four life um, is okay, but I don't think... Like, I would rather gain life from other sources where I don't have to intentionally sacrifice my creatures um, in order to get it. All right. Thank you, Creaky Chair. You're really adding to the Halloween atmosphere as you menacingly creak in the background. Really giving us that nice Halloween vibe. Actual Ikoria now. Yeah, I don't think we're going to bother with the, um, the who's he what's it's the mutate creatures. <clears throat> Probably not. <clears throat> Definitely not. I don't think we need any of the Aristocrats cards. Our stuff is going to die, but I don't think that's necessarily, you know, a reason to 
um, care about, you know, the aristocrat style life drain cards. <clears throat> like, I think we'll get more life from other things. Gain life equal to its toughness and draw a card is slightly better. <clears throat> um, but still, I think I would rather have other things to gain life with. I uh, don't need Dark Bargain, Dead Weight, Dirge Bat is 6 mana to mutate. Um, Enters the Battlefield, put a lifelink counter on target non-human, and then you can put 1-1 one -one counters on your lifelink creatures. Seems unlikely, but it could make it. I'm definitely interested in lifelink creatures, so... And Gix himself is a non-human, so if nothing else, we can put the counter on him. Uh, with converted mana cost two or less, no. <clears throat> Probably not on Extinction Event. I plan to have a bunch of tokens and Gix's odd, so... Between the number of even things I plan to have and the fact that I don't want to lose my commander randomly to my removal spell that's not killing everything. Um, I think we'll just skip Extinction Event. I don't think I would... Like, even if it was a 3-3 three, three Menace uh, lifelink for 3 mana, I don't think I would bother with it, so... Like, if you just told me I could have this 3-mana, three 3-3 three, three menace lifelink, you know, a creature that's difficult to block and is gaining me life while attacking, I still don't think I would bother running that card specifically, so... So the fact that I could occasionally give it um, Death Touch instead of one of those two abilities does not make me want to, like, grab the card and jam it in my deck. That don't need the Ozolith. Yeah, like we can put a lifelink counter on one of our creatures. I still don't think that's actually any good. Uh, we're not recurring this thing, so cycling it to put a death touch counter on doesn't do much. Yep, yeah, okay. So, maybe the Duskfang Mentor if we get enough other lifelink ways to gain life, but... <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Nice Halloween. Th couldn't have timed it better if I were trying. On we go to Innistrad. The most Halloween set out of all of Magic the Gathering sets. Gain life equal to the creature's toughness. No. I think we need Alter's Reap. Um, 8 mana, 13 zombies, and then 10 mana, 13 more. Eh. Certainly is a lot of bodies. Maybe. Maybe we're down for this. I mean, we did put Josu on the list. So maybe we're interested in Army of the Dead, Army of the Damned, rather. We just want to get through for damage and draw lots of cards. Uh, Blood Gift Demon, yes. Not only can we Phyrexian Arena, we can also force other people to Phyrexian Arena sometimes. And if we're already going to be running... A, cards that punish them for drawing, like, I, I think we have to run them, even though that discourages them from using Gix, that doesn't mean they won't draw their own cards anyway from, like, other things, uh, just because they won't use the extra one-life draw card thing on Gix, but also, um, putting in a bunch of things that punish players for discarding cards, so that way we get more out of each of the extra cards that they're drawing. 
Um, makes a two-two flying vampire. <sighs> Probably don't need bloodline keeper. Can't run bump in the night. Our things aren't human, so lifelink from that ain't happening. I mean, it would for some of them, but for the most part, we're not running human, so. Death's Hold, Curse of Oblivion, Dead Weight, Diagraph. Again, don't don't see us running. I, I want to gain life, but I also don't want our stuff to die, you know, unless it's dying anyway. And even then... Yeah, I don't think we need Heartless Summons. Liliana the Veil? Yeah. Liliana's getting in here. Of the Veil. Take all these players, discard these extra cards. Um, 3 1 lifelink now. Game for life, don't think so. No. No. This turn, destroy target non demon creature. We do have a lot of demons, but I still think not for that one. Creatures with the same name. Probably not. Sacrifice is a creature, you gain life equal to its toughness. Eh. Death touch. I'm breathing horde. Can't run on burial rites. No, no. Nope. I don't think I need hexproof for any reason, so no. Alright. Oh, we got a couple of things, so on to the next Innistrad. Uh, regular Crimson Bow. Um, nope. Think so. No. Let's soak Reveler. I mean, I do intend to gain life. So, the... I forget what the other side of him is. Is it like Restless Bloodseeker? We'll have to see, but maybe that's a thing. I'm also wondering now... Because we will have ways to punish the opponent for drawing. Yeah, if we want this guy at all. And we might. The downside to him is if they have ways to use the artifacts um, other than by drawing and discarding. But let's go to Crimson Bow. We can add them at least. Blood Vile Purveyor. Purveyor. Oh, Gor. Not Er. Blood Vile Purveyor. Uh, unfortunately, he's white on the front, so we can't run him. Think so. Uh, removes X counters or gives minus X minus X. Hmm, probably not. Also, probably not for Courier Bat, but I could see it as an evasive threat that gets us back another threat. 
if we've gained life this turn, which we should have. Um, yeah, he's only okay. Zero, zero, construct. That gets plus one, plus one for each other construct you control and gains haste. That's sorcery speed. We are going to be discarding an awful lot of cards. We already have uh, God Pharaoh's Gift. Maybe I'm down for the Dollhouse, too. Uh, no to that one. No to Dreadfast Demon, I think. Maybe discard one or more cards. Great, I tap 2-2 two, two Black Zombie Token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Mm -hmm. We're definitely going to be discarding often. <sighs> we only get one, so I can see this not making it, but I can also see it maybe, maybe making it. This is Crimson Vow, so they're not the stupid um, decay zombies that fall apart afterwards, so. Life that thing, gluttonous guest, That's death touch, alright, as long as we have the other thing, oh, Henrika has lifelink, and she loves to buff our lifelink creatures, Henrika Domnathy, sure. Heirloom, Innocent Traveler, Colonel, Lantern, Mind Leech. Mind Leech is just target opponent, right? Oh no, each opponent exiles a card from their hand. Maybe then? You know, if it's taking multiple cards, it is exiling them, which won't trigger some of our other effects, so maybe we don't want that, but... <clears throat> this is one life and you gain one life, but... Eh, it's still kind of meh. Specimen, point of discussion... You gain life this turn, make a blood token, sacrifice two blood tokens to transform him, then the other side is five mana drain to? Opponent loses two life, and I gain two life. Like, I don't know if that's actually good enough. We can definitely keep making blood tokens every turn. So the question then becomes is, can we do enough with them to make that a thing? Don't think we need that Soren. Can't run Tox Roll. Uh, no. No. No to that. Yeah, I don't even know that we would care about her and turning them into bats. Because she's only going to be really good if I get the Bloodseeker first. Like, I do plan on gaining life, and the Bloodseeker lets me draw more cards, or at least see more cards, like filter more cards that way. Alright, so, Crimson Vow. Alright, we have to... My thing has to be Crimson Vow, this thing has to be Innistrad Crimson Vow. So, Commander, pop on over there. Blood Tracker, still no to all of those. Uh, attacking vampires you control have Death Touch and Life Link. Whenever a vampire you control dies, you may pay two life to draw a card. I don't know how many actual vampires we're going to have. There'll be some, but...
Uh, death touch and lifelink, and a vampire dies, I can pay two life and draw a card. We'll consider it, I suppose. Like, it's a 6 mana 5-5 five, five lifelink death touch on the attack. Don't know that that's going to be good enough to make this deck, but... I definitely want uh, life gain in the deck, I just don't know... Like, how much... Like, if this is going to be one of the things that is worth it, because I don't know how much room we're going to have for... Like, cards that just have lifelink or some such. Um, so some number of the cards are going to have to be uh, self-sufficient while gaining me life. Like, also adding to the deck in other ways. I don't think we need the spider. Here's that glass heart again that I was looking at for braids. Uh, so you pay a life and you make a vampire token. Uh, vampires, um, oh no, I have to attack with one or more vampires, I get the blood token. And the vampire tokens have lifelink. So anytime they connect, it's a wash for, um, gaining life versus paying the life to draw a card. I guess it makes it onto the list and then we consider it. Uh, lifelink, whenever a creature dies, I gain a life and create a blood token. <laughs> and she is a 3-4 lifelink. <sighs> I mean, there's a part of me that's 100% down for that. I don't know if she's going to make the list either. The plunder. Agent, Arcana Revenant, Olivia's Wrath. Each non vampire gets minus X minus X, where X is the number of vampires. No. Ah, uh, hey, there's this madness thing. It's a demon. Um. Enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. You gain life equal to the greatest power among the creatures sacrificed. And black and two and pay eight life for madness. Eh. I think we can do better on both ends. Like, I would rather be reanimating this thing than ever paying the madness cost for it, so in order to actually gain lots of life by having it come into play. Discard a card. Whenever another non-token vampire you control dies, you can pay one and make the bat token, and whenever the bat deals damage to a player, return the creature to the battlefield tapped and lose the bat. Eh. Alright, so that's Crimson Vow. Next, Innistrad Midnight Hunt. The absolute most Halloween set on the already most Halloween plane. Because everybody's getting ready for the Harvest Tide Festival. And out of that, out of the Whisper, Blade Brand, brought you cards, lose to life, no. Each opponent discards a card. Eh, it's a 5-drop, though. Cut purse. No. Crawl. No. Hostile. Hostile. Beginning of Enchant players upkeep. They lose one life, and I gain one life. And then it transforms into a 4-4 four, four lifelink at night.
And every time it changes back, we can choose a different player for it to be on. I mean, I'm down for the draining one opponent out in order to get... Um, you know, more life to feed our thing. I don't know that this is going to make it either because it's such a small drain. Like, one life per turn cycle is not amazing. And a 4-4 lifelink is actually more vulnerable and likely to die uh, if we ever get to Nightfall. But if it survives until somebody casts two spells and we get to attach it to the player we most want to drain out at that point. So, I'll at least consider him. Scrolling past a bunch of cards, but I don't think we're losing anything. Uh, the Dreadhound doesn't drain, it just makes them lose life for things dying. I'm not going to bother with eating alive, don't need this guy. So yeah, just keep going. Foul play is little creatures. Uh, yeah, I don't think I care at all about those things. <sighs> Graveyard Trespasser. Does gain me random bits of life. Um, she's likely to just eat a wrath effect, like, I'm never gonna make an opponent lose a card to get rid of her, but maybe we can drain a bunch of life, it's 1s the first time for trespass, okay. Pay a life, discard a card... Draw a card, mill a card, put a ritual counter on it. Then if there are three or more ritual counters... Is it three or more, or am I making that? Three or more ritual counters becomes a 4-4. Four, four. And the 4-4's four, effect is... Exile target creature card from a graveyard. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on the fiend. Nope. No. Uh, Infernal Grasp, Maybe. Definitely one of the most versatile black removal spells ever, so. I don't think we need Jadar. Or another non-token human you control dies. You lose one life and make a 1-1 one, one human. Uh, target human gains lifelink until end of turn. And at the beginning of your end step, if you have exactly 13 life, you can transform him into uh, Ormondal, right? And Ormondal is like a giant angry lifelink creature. 6-6, six, six, flying, trample, lifelink, sack another creature, draw a card. Eh. The problem is I don't know how many actual humans we will have uh, for, like... For him to give a human lifelink, which is one of the better things about him, like, obviously he can target himself and the human token that he makes, but if we don't have enough humans in the deck, then I don't really care about, like, yes, we will randomly get to uh, 13 life on our turn at some point in time and get to flip into Ormondal, but even then, Ormondal's not amazing. Uh, other than the ability to sack creatures to draw cards. Um, because he's just a big dumb creature, he'll get killed almost immediately. So. Uh, flying, trample, sacrifice a creature to make a player mill three, pay one life out of colorless, only to cast a spell from my graveyard. Alright, there we go. Mask of Gristlebrand. Definitely something I'm interested in. Uh, giving flying and lifelink to my creatures and letting me draw cards at the cost of my own life seems like everything I'm interested in. So we can definitely run that. I do love me some Morbid Opportunist. I will add him to the list. Maybe we can find... A good place for him, because I expect our stuff to be dying in combat anyway as we try and force things through in order to draw cards, so. Uh, yeah, I don't need Necrosynthesis. No way out. No, no. Shady Traveler. Siege Zombie. No. I don't 
think we need the Celestis. Um, so opponent's creatures dying gives us life. I think I could be down for the Meat Hook Massacre. Just to gain large amounts of life from our opponent's stuff dying. More so than our stuff dying, paying the opponent. I think I'm okay with that. Alright, so we don't want the next uh, Midnight Hunt. Like, this should be Alchemy, so this should be the Commander one. Yep. So there was a black red um vampire deck, right? Oh no. No, this is the that was the other one. This is the uh black blue zombie deck and the white green uh whatchamacallit matters. Power like Coven basically matters where things having different power and toughness. Uh three mana, tap add black. Six tap sacrifice it, create a two two zombie with decayed for each corpse counter on it. Yeah, no, I don't think so. There's a battlefield under enchant player's control. I create a 2 2 black zombie with decayed. Meh. Mills X, and then I create a tap 2 2. An artwork Eater of Hope. Uh, choose a creature card in that player's graveyard, put those cards onto the battlefield under my control, they're black zombies, and gain decayed. You may exile any number of creature cards from your graveyard, this spell costs two less for each creature exile in this way, or for death touch, uh, attacks or dies, choose a card at random exiled with Gore-Tex and put it in, oh, no, into your hand. Never mind. There's a part of my brain that said, wait, that says into, or that says onto, not into, and it's like, nope. Puts it into your hand. It's an 8 mana 4-4, four, four, but you can exile, like, 3 creatures from your graveyard to make it a 2 mana 4-4. Four, four. And then you get back one of them at random whenever it attacks or dies. So if you spent four mana as a four four for it and you get it to attack once, then it dies regardless, you get uh both of the things. Yeah, we're not gonna necessarily be sacrificing things, so that guy's not at his best. I don't think we need the Tomb Tyrant either. What was Visions of Dread again? Puts a creature card of their choice uh, from their graveyard onto the battlefield under my control, and then it costs two black and five. So seven mana to flashback. Yeah, even with some amount of graveyard control, like being able to pick and choose what we're removing from opponents' graveyards, I still don't love that card. Hey, right. well, that that was that was the very spooky Innistrad. I guess we can do invasion real quick, and then I'll call it a stream. It's like one o'clock now, and I gotta leave by one thirty, and I still want to do a little bit before I go. So let's just go through. Can't run that one. Definitely not running the leech. Always liked Annihilate. You know, destroy a non-black creature, draw a card. Even at five mana. No card. Crypt Angel does nothing. No to Curse Flesh. No Defiling Tears. No. No. Nope. It's a creature or a land. Draw a card. And Hate Weaver. Gen 2 Stakes. Draw 
Morning, night, morning. This Brexian altar comes in play. Return target creature card from your graveyard to play. You lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Yeah. Those two. Back to a graveyard deals one damage. No. Uh, target opponent, so no. I think I need Reckless Spite. Cover. Scavenge Weaponry, no. Soul Burn, can't run, I believe. Sparring Golem, Spreading Plague. No. The swamp, no. No. I think so. Don't necessarily need that. No, no. Can't run it. Can't run it. No, no. Yeah, I didn't think there was anything in Invasion, so I figured we could do it real quick. Alright, so. Yeah, like I said, short stream. And then I spent, like, part of it looking at new cards. But that's going to do it for me today. Got to head off to work soon. But I uh, will see you next time. So if you're having any kind of thing for Halloween tonight, you know, have a good one. Enjoy it. And I will see you tomorrow for the first day of November, most likely. And we will start picking out more cards from Ixalan and then Homelands. No, wait. Homelands was alphabetical with H-I-J. No. Yeah, we already did Homelands. That's right. It's easy to forget because Homelands is terrible, but in addition to not mathing, apparently I also forgot my ABCs. All, all of the basics just tumbling through my brain, through the sieve that is my brain with all of its extra holes there. Just letting useful information go. But on the bright side, I can remember Magic the Gathering cards. So, got that going for me at least. Alright, I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.